This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. As of today, we are officially just two weeks away from the start of the 2024 MLB season. I was looking at the calendar for the show and realized... If we're going to talk MLB futures, there aren't a lot of other slots available because we got March Madness coming up. We have got NFL free agency coming up next week. It's a pretty loaded sports schedule. So didn't leave a lot of slots to talk MLB futures. So that's what we're going to do today is break down some futures I like over at FanDuel Sportsbook, talking a couple of divisional bets and a win total. And then I'll break down Formula One in Saudi Arabia and discuss where my models show value for this week. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Here to dig into the 2024 MLB futures market and outline where I see value for this year at FanDuel Sports, but going to course some Formula One as well. We'll dig into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, a lot of the good stuff coming up the rest of this week. Got a big UFC event coming up this weekend. We have some EPL. Uh, NASCAR is going to be out in Phoenix. So all that coming up here later this week on the show. And next week, a lot of college basketball. Dr. Ed Feng is back with us. We're going to talk NFL free agency and get more college basketball conference tournament thoughts in out there for you as well. So Search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. Don't forget the show also posted on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG, Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's dig in now to the 2024 MLB season for the first time and outline some spots where I see value across FanDuel Sportsbook for this year. We'll begin things off with a couple of divisional winners I like. Let's talk about the AL East. It's a very tough division. Obviously, the Yankees added Juan Soto, the Orioles, surprise team last year. They've made some additions with Corbin Burns, have some more money potentially to spend under the new ownership. The Jays, a very competitive team, too. That's accounted for in the odds, how tough this division is. The Rays are plus 650. That is 13% implied odds. And if you go to fan graphs right now, the Rays are 24% to win this division according to their numbers. And, you know, you'll see discrepancies like that, and maybe not accounting for potential signings for the Orioles and things like that. But I understand why the data is high on the Rays entering this year. Obviously, the Rays did struggle quite a bit in the second half last year. And that matters because we want to take into account the full season. But that also is important. We want to take into account the full season, not just the second half. Their current active roster had a 119 WRC plus overall last year, according to Fangrass. And that ranks third in baseball currently behind just the Braves and the Dodgers. No other AL East team is higher than 107. Again, the, the Rays are at 119. 
Pitching this year could struggle with no Shane McClanahan. Uh, that's definitely a downgrade for them. But we get a full year of Taj Bradley. He had, you know, some struggles last year for sure. But there are at least building blocks for superstar potential there. And the role players on this team stepped up as well. Got really good depth in the bullpen. So, yeah, the Rays did fade down the stretch last year. But the hot start they had, that also does matter. And when you look at their season as a whole last year, it's a pretty good indicator that this team is not an afterthought, even in a very tough division. So I think that leads to considering the race here plus 650 to win the AL East. Again, the implied odds there are just 13%. That's writing them off. And I'm not quite there yet. So to me, I think the Rays deserve some consideration, despite the fact that this division is tough, because I would expect that offense to thrive once again throughout this year. So the Rays plus 650, first place I am turning. The second division that I think is intriguing is one where there's really no runaway favorite, at least by my mind. That's the NL Central, where the Cardinals are the favorites of plus 155, Cubs are 2-1, to one, Reds 4-1, to one, Brewers are 6-1. to one. I think the Cardinals specifically are very vulnerable in this division. They did make some moves at the start of the offseason to address pitching, but they were not the most exciting moves by any means. And it's an underwhelming group and it's an old group. So I think that gives them volatility. And in this sense, it's not in the positive way. The offense of the Cardinals is fine. It's okay. Uh, not a standout. So I broadly think there's no one runaway team in this division. And as a result of that, I think there could be some, some value elsewhere here. Don't hate the Cubs. Don't hate the Reds, but the Brewers are underrated likely due to how bad their offense is. And the offense being bad is legitimate. Uh, they had a 92 WRC plus on their active roster last year, which ranks 26th in the league. But those numbers don't include Reese Hoskins, who missed the entirety of last year, now signed with the Brewers. He's not a perfect hitter, but he's definitely someone who will help. When you look at this offense now, it's still going to be underwhelming, and I think it'll be below average. But I don't think it'll be as bad as what the current numbers say the Brewers were last year. The defense is very good. Bullpen is still what it was. Obviously, the big question beyond the, the offense is starting pitching. Uh, no Brandon Woodruff this year. Corbin Burns is now gone. That's a concern. And it's not a lock they get decent pitching to overcome the woes they have offensively. I think Freddie Peralta is an ace, though. Other guys just trying to bridge the gap to the bullpen. So. I think they're an okay team. Again, I don't love their offense. I think that is legitimate, that they are potentially going to struggle a lot there, but it's better than it was. 6-1 to one to win, that's 14.3% implied odds. When you put that in a division that doesn't really have a clear-cut runaway option, I think that's too long. So the Brewers, to me, 6-1, to one, the best bet in the NL Central, and a team I'm willing to buy into, despite the fact I know their offense is not going to be very good. Offense is not everything. It can lead to volatility being in lower scoring games, but in this sense, volatility is a good thing. So I like the Brewers 6-1 to one to win the NL Central. Final one I want to highlight here, as far as futures for this year, is around the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, we're not betting the Dodgers to win uh, the World Series because the odds are very short. Not betting them to win the NL West because the odds are unfathomably high there. Their win total is 103.5. And the under is minus 105. It does feel bad to do this because if I bet against the Dodgers from a futures perspective, I have to read against Shohei Otani and Mookie Betts every single day. And I really, really don't want to do that because those are two of my favorite players in the entire league. They're a very fun team. And given their roster, it's very possible the Dodgers could sleepwalk to this number. But there are a couple of things that keep me away from the over here with the Dodgers. And a big one is. They've got a lot of volatility in their pitching. Again, I keep coming back to that word, volatility. But when expectations are so high, volatility is not your friend. Yoshinobu Yamamoto should be really fun for this team. But they also do use a different baseball in the Nippon Professional Baseball League than what they use here. We were talking with Rob Friedman, pitching ninja, about Kode Senga last year. Senga making the same transition. And Senga... In April and, and and May, walked a lot of guys, really struggled to get his groove on, but then he did get a handle on his breaking pitches, and he really took off. But there was a transition period, and Rob said that was because of the different size baseball, and we could see Yamamoto go through a similar transition this year. 
Got Tyler Glass now, James Paxton, not exactly the models of health, typically. Walker Bueller coming off a very long absence, no Clayton Kershaw for a while. So we shouldn't be surprised if the pitching for the Dodgers, the starting pitching specifically, could have some issues at some point. They will score runs. Um, so we know that for sure. And they're going to be a fun team to watch. But 103 and a half wins a lot. That's been, that's happened 42 times in the history of Major League Baseball. So sure, the Dodgers should be the favorites. They're an awesome team uh, who I, I love. But we have to also think about this team philosophically. What is their goal? Is their goal to win 104 win games this year during the regular season? Or is it to win a World Series? And will they take steps with their starting pitching to ensure those guys are at their peak in October? That's kind of where I'm thinking with this one as well. Their goal is to win the World Series. Their goal is not to win 104 games. So it could make me look like a total donkey to bet against the Dodgers, given how fun that roster is and how legitimately good they are. But under 103 and a half, minus 105, I think is the proper way to view this team right now, given the question marks around the pitching with their health, given the fact that their goal is to win the World Series and not win games during the regular season. I think that's enough to justify taking an under 103 and a half at minus 105 on the Dodgers. So my three favorite MLB futures this year, Dodgers under 103.5 wins, minus 105. I like the Brewers to win the NL Central at 6-1, and I like the Rays to win the AL East at plus 650, all available right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I did look through uh, some player-level markets. I didn't see anything that I really liked, honestly, so wound up sitting it out, uh, sticking with just the team-wide markets. You can maybe find some fun long shots for the awards market, but personally, given all the dynamics there, I'm okay setting those markets out. So just the team level futures for me. We're going to Tom Vecchio talk uh, some more MLB futures the week of opening day. He'll also be taking you through opening day because I'll be out that week uh, out in Scotland. So we'll have some more MLB futures talk coming up later on the show, but we'll let things stand there for right now. Let's talk about some Formula One out in Saudi Arabia for this week's second race of the season for Formula One. They are in Jeddah. Max Verstappen, after his dominant win in Bahrain, is minus 490 to win this race. And that could be boring, potentially. I get it for sure. Uh, but from a betting perspective, we don't have to bet outrights. And in fact, when I look at FanDuel Sportsbook's odds to win the race, I show value on literally zero drivers, including Verstappen, to win. So I can just set it out and look elsewhere. I think the value lies in the lower tier markets. And it's on two guys who really impressed me in the opening race of the year. Those two guys are Lance Stroll and Joe Guan Yu. And I think that we can buy into both those guys in a couple of different markets. Let's begin things off with Stroll. Plus 750 to finish inside the top six for this week. And Stroll last week, underwhelmingly qualifying, didn't make it into Q3, and started the race in the mid-pack. And because he was starting mid-pack, he was involved in a, a, a pileup or a tussle on the first lap of the race, got spun in that first corner. So Stroll went from starting in already in a, a bad position to running 19th on the first lap. But they used a different strategy as a result of that race. They got on the hard tires really quickly, and those hard tires worked really well. And we saw Stroll have really good pace during the race. He rallied to finish 10th in that one. It didn't get a lot of buzz because Stroll did finish last among the big five teams, but but I think it was impressive when you consider the context of this guy was spun backwards and running 19th on the first lap of the race and did get back up into the top 10. Now, the counterpoint would be that his teammate Fernando Alonso did not have a good race in that one. He finished ninth, couldn't really keep up with the McLarens, Mercedes, and, and teams like that. That means that Aston Martin is not thriving right now. But I do think there is pace in that car. And that's why I like Stroll to finish inside the top six. That's plus 750 at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is 11.8% implied odds. I have Stroll at 19.6%, which means I'm a good amount above market here on Stroll to finish inside the top six. Usually when you're pretty far off market, as we discussed, you tend to be the one who is wrong. So there's always that risk here with Stroll. But I also understand why my model is on Stroll right now. You look back at last year, obviously Aston Martin had a very good start to the year. They finished top six or strolled it in 23% uh, of all races. I'm not expecting that level once again, given that Aston Martin doesn't seem quite as quick as they were to open last year. Uh, but 
I'm also not there. You know, I'm at 19.6%. The market is a half of what he did last year. I think generally the market tends to underestimate Stroll, given that kind of a Nepo baby, um, and people don't tend to view him or rate him very highly as a driver, but he's fine. He's not a bad driver. He had good marks in the lower series. It is a pretty good car. So I think that Stroll plus 750 for a top six is a good option for this week, taking advantage of the fact that he did rally and race pretty well in last week's event. As mentioned, the second guy I'm on for this week is Joe Guan Yu. We're not doing T6 for Joe Guan Yu because it'd be tough to ask a team back here to overcome the big five teams at the front of the pack. But Joe is a guy I didn't really have high expectations for this year because I didn't have high expectations for his team and Kick Sauber. They really struggled last year, especially towards the back half of the season. A lot of retirements, not a lot of pace. So I went in with a pretty low prior on them. And I still don't have a super high opinion of this team, but I think the bigger thing is that a lot of their biggest competition underwhelmed in the opening race. I thought that Daniel Ricciardo and Yuki, Yuki Sonoda were just fine in that opener, whereas I had higher expectations for them. Sonoda was decent. Uh, Ricardo just okay, I thought, in that race. Alpine was hideous, and we can now view him as being a back-of-the-pack type team. And Williams, hard to get a good read on them. Because Alexander Albon had some engine issues, so not really sure what their true pace was for that race. But Joe Guan Yu used the same strategy as Stroll, where he got on the hard tires early, and it paid off for him. He held his ground uh, after he got track position, and I thought really impressed in that race. Guan Yu, or Joe, finished uh, 11th in that one. He's now plus 410 to finish inside the top 10 in Saudi Arabia. That is 19.6% implied odds. I have Joe at 24.3% to finish top 10. Now, Sauber was not in the points a lot last year, so just three total times where uh, Joe was inside the points. So this is a pretty big bump, uh, but he had good pace in the race on, on Saturday, and his biggest competitors for a top 10 also struggled. We could see some more attrition in the top 10 than what we saw last week where there were no retirements at all for the entire race. So I think that's enough to make uh, Joe, very interesting here at plus 410. So the two F1 bets I like for this weekend, I like Lance Stroll top six at plus 750 and Joe Guan Yu top 10 at plus 410. If you want the full simulations of this race, check out FanDuel.com slash research. Go to the F1 tab. You can find my full model simulations prior to practice and qualifying for this weekend's race with FP1 occurring on Thursday. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. We are back with you once again tomorrow. A bit more racing talk in the show again. So we'll be talking uh, NASCAR out in Phoenix. We'll also have Austin Cass on to talk about EPL Match Week 28 with a full slate there as well. To get that as it is posted, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Search for Covering the Spread. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Saunas. You can find me on threads at jim.saunas and check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across Wednesday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for some soccer and NASCAR. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 